Many people are fascinated by the mysterious and the unknown. And if you are among them, then this video is for you. I present to you 20 of the most mysterious unsolved mysteries of humanity. Enjoy watching. Stonehenge, located in the English county of Wiltshire, is one of the most famous ancient sites in the world. It consists of a circular structure made from 30 giant stones. The tallest of these stones stands at 4.1 meters, with a weight of more than 25 tons. It is believed that Stonehenge was built about 5,000 years ago. But by whom? How were these people able to construct such a structure? How did they manage to place several stones on top of others at a height of at least 3 meters? Scientists have been trying to find answers to these questions for a very long time, but only have hypotheses. A few kilometers from Stonehenge, archaeologists discovered traces of an ancient settlement, likely inhabited by the builders of this man-made wonder. Who these people were is unknown. Scientists believe they could have been ancient Romans or Druids. It is assumed that they used the structure as a sacred site or altar since human remains were found on the Stonehenge site. Modern researchers think that the giant stones were transported from an ancient quarry using draft animals and rolling logs. In this way, local residents carried out the construction of Stonehenge over a millennium. Among the hypotheses is also the theory that this archaeological monument was built by aliens, as it is indeed hard to believe that ancient people could construct such a structure without using special equipment. Atheists often claim that there is no physical evidence of Jesus Christ's existence. However, the Orthodox and Catholic churches believe that the Shroud of Turin bears witness to the Son of God's presence on earth. The Shroud of Turin is a linen cloth measuring 4.37 by 1.11 meters, bearing the full-length imprint of a man. It is believed that Jesus Christ was wrapped in this fabric after the crucifixion. The imprint indeed resembles the images of Christ we are accustomed to seeing. This artifact was first discovered in the 14th century and is now kept in Turin, in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, considered a relic. Unfortunately, scientists have acknowledged that the shroud is a forgery. Radiocarbon dating showed that it was likely created in the 13th century. However, skeptics believe that the results were influenced by stains that appeared precisely in the Middle Ages, partly because it is not in science's interest to acknowledge that God indeed exists. The Beale ciphers are three encrypted messages containing information about the location of a hidden treasure. People first learned about these ciphers from a pamphlet published by James Beverly Ward, while the author of the manuscript preferred to remain unknown. According to the backstory of the ciphers, in 1820, Robert Morris, owner of the Washington Hotel in Lynchburg, Virginia, met a bison hunter named Thomas Jefferson Beale. The two men quickly found common ground, and Beale became a guest at the hotel. He often left for some business and returned to the hotel to rest. The last time he visited Morris was in 1822. Then he left the hotel owner an iron box, locked with a key, containing very important and secret documents, according to Beale. The hunter promised to return for it in two years and asked to keep the box until his return. Morris waited for his guest until 1832, realizing then that there was no hope for Beale's return. However, even after this, he dared not open the box and only did so another 13 years later. Inside the iron box were three sheets of paper, completely covered in numbers. Morris remembered that Beale had spoken of treasures left near the city of Buford, so he assumed that the message encrypted the location of hidden riches. Attempts to decipher the ciphers were made repeatedly. A key to one of them, which turned out to be a text from the Declaration of Independence, was found. Thanks to this, it became clear that Beale hid treasures worth about $30 million in today's value. However, the exact location of the treasure was encrypted in another cipher, the key to which has yet to be found. The Beale ciphers have sparked much debate. Some believe Morris made up the entire story, while others still hope to solve the mystery and find the treasure. The 
The Bermuda Triangle is known as one of the most mystical places in the world. In this area, unexplained phenomena regularly occurred, resulting in the disappearance of ships and planes along with people. But what causes this anomaly? Let's find out. The Bermuda Triangle is located in the Sargasso Sea between Miami, the Bermuda Islands, and San Juan in Puerto Rico. The area of this region is 700,000 square kilometers. The Bermuda Triangle is crossed by popular water and air routes from the Caribbean Sea to Europe and from the U.S. East Coast to South America. Shipwrecks and aviation disasters occur not only in this area but are quite frequent there. Conspiracy theorists believe that this zone is anomalous because Atlantis was once located there but was overtaken by aliens. Scientists refute these assumptions. They explain that the disappearance of people is due to shipwrecks and aviation disasters. In the Bermuda Triangle, these occur due to navigation difficulties. The area has many shoals, and it is also prone to cyclones and storms. However, experts believe that the Bermuda Triangle was deliberately hyped by conspiracy theory proponents. And although this place is indeed dangerous, there are many similar areas in the world ocean. Cleopatra is known to history as one of the Egyptian queens. She was intelligent, educated, and a vibrant woman. Her biography is still discussed today. Cleopatra was born in 69 BC in Alexandria. She came from the Ptolemaic dynasty, founded by Ptolemy the Soter, a Diadochi of Alexander the Great, so she did not have Egyptian blood. Despite this, she strived to fully integrate into the culture and customs of her people. Cleopatra became the first ruler from her dynasty to learn the Egyptian language. Additionally, she wore traditional clothing for Egyptian queens. Cleopatra drove many men mad. Meeting her was fatal for the great Roman generals Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. With the latter of these two influential men, Cleopatra had a mutual relationship and sincerely loved him. The circumstances of the Egyptian queen's death are not precisely known. Still, it is believed that she committed suicide to avoid becoming a prisoner of Octavian. The location of Cleopatra's tomb remains unknown, despite the best archaeologists' attempts to find it. However, researchers from the Dominican archaeological mission recently found many artifacts belonging to the reign of Cleopatra in the temple of Tapasiris. Moreover, using radar surveys, scientists have discovered a network of tunnels and corridors leading to three large rooms. According to archaeologist Kathleen Martinez, the tombs of Cleopatra and Mark Antony are located inside these rooms. Perhaps the greatest mystery in post-war America was the disappearance of the Sauter family's children. George and Jenny Sauter had ten children and lived a normal life in Fayetteville, West Virginia. However, on Christmas Eve in 1945, a terrible fire broke out in their home. When it happened, the entire family was asleep. Jenny was the first to wake up to the smell of smoke. She woke her husband, and together with four of their children, they managed to escape outside. They couldn't save the other children because the path to their rooms was engulfed in flames. The most astonishing thing was that the Sodders and their neighbors' phone lines had been cut, so they couldn't call the firefighters in time. Moreover, when George tried to use his truck to reach the house through the roof, he found that it wouldn't start. When the firefighters arrived at the scene, they couldn't find the remains of the deceased children. But how could that happen? The day before the tragedy, an insurance agent visited the Sodders. During the conversation, George expressed his dislike for the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini. These words angered the insurance agent, and the men argued. A few days later, a stranger came to the Sodders, pointing out a fault in the wiring but George didn't listen to him. After the fire, an investigation showed that the fire was caused by faulty wiring. Among the experts was that same outraged insurance agent. Doesn't that seem strange to you? But still, where could the children's remains have disappeared if they were indeed inside the house? Or could it be that at the time of the fire, they were already taken out of the country? As you can see, there are many mysteries in this story. The name Jack the Ripper became known in modern times thanks to a horror film about a brutal serial maniac. 
The prototype for this character was a real person with the same name. In 1888, Londoners were terrified when they learned that a maniac was at large in the city. His victims were usually homeless women and prostitutes, but no one could know what was on the mind of this psychopath and who would be the next to be killed. From August to November of the same year, he killed five women. Their bodies were mutilated, but there was not much blood at the crime scene. Therefore, the killer was initially nicknamed Leather Apron. Later, journalists reported that a letter had been received by the editorial office with confessions to the murders, and it was signed by the name Jack the Ripper. Whether this was true or a fabrication by the newspaper editors is unknown. Interestingly, Jack the Ripper acted very carefully and managed to escape from the crime scene literally a few minutes before the arrival of the police. During the investigation, no fewer than 2,000 people were interviewed, of whom 80 were considered suspects. However, to this day, the identity of the maniac has not been established. In Staffordshire, England, there is the Shugborough Estate, home to the Shepherd's Monument, created in the 18th century. The relief on this monument depicts a copy of Nicolas Poussin's painting, The Shepherds of Arcadia, but it became famous for the strange inscription that appears as a set of letters, O, U, O, S, Vive, A, V, V, D, and M, are also engraved at the bottom on two sides. Many, including modern cryptography experts, have tried to solve the mystery of this text. Undoubtedly, there have been countless theories about what these letters might mean. Some suggested that the monument conceals the location of the Holy Grail, while others believed it to be a mere declaration of love from the estate's owner to his wife. American scholar Keith Massey stated that there is no cipher on the Shepherd's Monument. In his view, it is merely an abbreviation of a phrase that can be translated from Latin as, I pray that all may follow the path to true life. This phrase refers to the words of Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. However, this hypothesis was criticized, possibly because Massey just found Latin words that fit these letters. The disappearance of a Boeing 747 belonging to Malaysia Airlines became one of the most horrific mysteries in the history of modern aviation. On March 8, 2014, at 042, the passenger plane took off from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. There were 239 people on board the Boeing 747, 12 crew members and 227 passengers. 40 minutes after takeoff, the pilot ceased communication and a few minutes later, the plane disappeared from radar screens. Subsequent investigations revealed that after its disappearance, the Boeing was still in the air for another seven hours. This is strange. The aircraft was operated by two experienced pilots. In case of system failures, they likely could have turned the aircraft around and returned to Kuala Lumpur, but they did not. It all seemed as if someone deliberately made the plane's location unknown. Six hours after the flight's disappearance, a search and rescue operation was organized. The South China Sea, the Malacca Strait, and part of the Indian Ocean near the western coasts of Australia were surveyed in the shortest possible time. Unfortunately, the search yielded no results. In 2015 and 2016, small fragments of the Boeing were accidentally discovered on the islands of Reunion and Rodriguez and the coasts of Mozambique and Mossel Bay, South Africa. These findings confirmed the air crash. Of course, the people on board perished, but what caused the plane to crash? Unfortunately, there is still no answer to this question. According to one of the most popular theories, the plane was hijacked. This could have been done by terrorists or the aircraft's captain, Zahari Ahmad Shah. A flight simulator was found in his home, where he had planned various routes across the Indian Ocean. However, the investigation does not consider this direct evidence of the pilot's guilt. Amelia Mary Earhart became the first female pilot to cross the Atlantic Ocean in 1928, at the age of 31. By 40, Amelia had achieved tremendous success in aviation and decided to embark on a round-the-world journey before retiring. On May 20, 1937, 
Earhart and her navigator Fred Noonan set off on their final record flight in their twin-engine Lockheed Electra monoplane. By early July, they had covered about 80% of the total distance, flying over the Atlantic, Africa, Arabia, India, and Southeast Asia. On July 2nd, Earhart and Noonan departed from Ley, on the coast of New Guinea, heading for Howland Island in the Central Pacific Ocean, where they planned to refuel the plane and continue their journey. This 18-hour flight was challenging for navigation at that time, despite a Coast Guard ship waiting near the island's shores. According to the last messages received by this ship, Earhart reported being unable to find Howland with very little fuel remaining. Unfortunately, the pilots never reached the island. Extensive searches for the wreckage of the plane and their remains were conducted for a long time, but nothing was found. In January 2024, divers from the company Deep Sea Vision found wreckage in the Pacific Ocean belonging to Earhart's plane, but no human remains were found. According to an alternative theory, the pilots indeed survived a crash, but were captured by Japanese soldiers. This is supposedly evidenced by photographs from Jaluit Atoll, showing a man and a woman resembling Earhart and Noonan. The Ark of the Covenant is not only a sacred relic for Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, but also one of the most mysterious objects in human history. According to the Old Testament, the chest contained the stone tablets of the covenant with the Ten Commandments, a jar of manna from heaven, and Aaron's rod. This relic is recognized by religions as a symbol of God's covenant with the people of Israel, and accordingly, it is evidence of God's existence and His contact with humanity. The Ark of the Covenant was designed as a chest. It was made of acacia wood and covered with gold inside and out. On the lid were two cherubim with outstretched wings. Special rings were located on the sides into which sturdy poles were inserted. This design allowed for convenient transportation of the Ark, as it weighed about 300 kilograms. The Ark of the Covenant was stored in the Jerusalem Temple for a long time. The last documented mention of it dates back to 622 BC. Unfortunately, nothing is known about the fate of the holy relic after that. Historians have long tried to determine where the Ark disappeared to, but without success. It is believed to be hidden either under the Temple Mount in Jerusalem or in Aksum, the former capital of Ethiopia. However, these are only hypotheses without direct evidence. Throughout human history, there have been many different civilizations. Over time, they disappeared, and in most cases, wars and epidemics were to blame. But with the Maya civilization, things happened differently, and these indigenous people mysteriously vanished. Before the arrival of colonizers in South America, there were many different peoples. The most famous civilizations among them were the Aztecs, the Incas, and of course, the Maya. The Maya managed to create a great empire. This people had their own writing system. They developed art, studied mathematics, and built true architectural masterpieces, which impress with their beauty and grandeur to this day. The civilization's peak occurred between 250 and 900 AD, but by 1050, all the major Maya cities were deserted. What could have happened to the most powerful people of South America? Scientists have several theories on this matter. The demise of the civilization could have been caused by a severe drought. According to research, at the turn of the 9th and 10th centuries, the annual volume of precipitation on the continent decreased by 70%. A similar drought occurred around 200 AD, when the population of the major city of Sebal sharply decreased. This allowed scientists to speculate that the civilization's demise occurred for this reason. According to a second theory, the Maya almost completely disappeared from the face of the earth after a large-scale war. Representatives of this civilization were not a unified people. Conflicts often occurred among them, and the leaders of one tribe attacked other settlements. Research showed that in the early 9th century, a fierce battle was fought in the city of Tikal, Besides these two hypotheses, there are many other theories, but no scientist knows what caused the demise of the civilization.
1957, a tragedy struck the Pollock family. Their daughters, Jacqueline and Joanna, were killed by a car as they were walking with friends to church. The girl's death deeply affected their parents' family life, leading to frequent arguments and thoughts of divorce. However, a miracle occurred, and Mrs. Pollock became pregnant. On October 4, 1958, twin girls were born and named Jillian and Jennifer. The family decided to move to avoid constant reminders of their tragedy. As the girls grew, their parents noticed some peculiarities. The daughters began asking for toys that belonged to their deceased sisters, even though their parents had never shown them those toys. Moreover, Jennifer had the same birthmark as Jacqueline and a mole on her forehead, corresponding to a scar Jacqueline had from a fall. Strangely enough, the twin girls panicked whenever a car drove by them. All this alarmed the head of the family, leading him to believe that their first daughters had reincarnated and were reborn into the same family. This story sparked much debate. Canadian-American psychiatrist Ian Stevenson believed the Pollock family and found several other people who supported the phenomenon of reincarnation. However, most people considered it a fabrication to attract media attention. An experienced Japanese diver named Arataki loved to observe the underwater world of the East China Sea. During such dives, he saw many things, but in 1986 he discovered something incredible. Huge underwater rocks with even rectangular terraces and protrusions. Naturally, this formation didn't seem like a natural occurrence, giving the impression that it was a man-made structure. Professor Masaki Kimura, a marine geology and seismology professor at the University of Ryukyu, took up the study of these strange rocks, which were named the Yonaguni Monument. He dedicated a long 15 years to this endeavor. Through his research, he concluded that 10,000 years ago, these stone structures were above the surface and indeed were created by humans. According to Masaaki, the Yonaguni Monument is the ruins of an ancient city inhabited by an unknown advanced civilization. Unfortunately, other scientists were skeptical of such a suggestion and continue to believe that these formations were created by nature. Either way, this site remains one of the most popular among divers. People believe that these stones were once structures of an ancient city, so they come to see this wonder with their own eyes. The Statue of Liberty is one of the most visited attractions in the world. Millions of tourists come to admire its majesty, but few know it hides its secrets. Today, visitors are allowed to climb to the observation deck at the crown level. However, this is not the only room inside the monument. Inside the torch, which the statue holds in her hand, lies a secret room. Until 1916, tourists could visit it, but then it became inaccessible. According to the official version, the room was closed due to reconstruction, but some claim to have seen CIA and U.S. Air Force employees visiting it occasionally. But why? Skeptics believe that a secret intelligence base inside this room is now used for monitoring aliens. It sounds too strange. But why would intelligence service employees visit this room? Area 51 remained a secret U.S. Air Force military base for a long time. It couldn't be found on a map, and people didn't know about its existence. However, once that changed, Area 51 gained scandalous fame. To this day, details of the base's activities are not disclosed, but the U.S. Air Force claims it serves as an open training range where testing of experimental aircraft and weapon systems takes place. Although this information is considered official, conspiracy theorists believe that Area 51 houses secret evidence of alien existence. These assumptions didn't come without reason. Strange events occurred near the military base. For example, in 2015, unusual lights were seen in the sky moving at fantastic speeds. Interestingly, specialists from other air bases admitted that they often observed similar phenomena in the sky over Area 51. Apart from suspicious events, former employees of the range spoke about the U.S. Air Force's contacts with aliens. The most shocking among these was the confession of physicist Bob Lazar. 
He reported that Area 51 serves as a center where military and scientists communicate with extraterrestrial civilizations. The U.S. government only acknowledged the existence of Area 51 in 2013, although it was established in 1955. They explained this secrecy as a means to protect their military strategic developments from hostile countries. But what is true, and what is false, remains a mystery. In 1902, sponge divers found a strange stone at the bottom of the Ionian Sea near the Greek island of Antikythera. Further examination of the find revealed that it was some ancient mechanism, possibly an astrolabe. Fifty years after the artifact was discovered, English historian Derek John de Sola Price undertook its study. Through X-ray examination, he realized that the mechanism was used as a calendar and a device for tracking the positions of the sun, moon, and other planets. In other words, the Antikythera mechanism can be called an ancient analog of computing technology. Many scientists have attempted reconstructions of this artifact, but real progress was only made quite recently, especially since other fragments of the device have been found since then. In 2021, experts from Professor Freeth's group managed to perform complex calculations and finally figured out what this mechanism fully looked like. 37 gears, of which 30 were found, were housed in a small wooden box. Dials, limbs, concentric rings, and pointers were located on the front and back panels. A handle on the side panel was used to operate the mechanism. On the side panels, there was also a sort of instruction manual for operating the device. Using this mechanism, ancient scientists could track the current positions of Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, and predict their future locations. Additionally, the device could predict lunar and solar eclipses, covering a total of 42 astronomical events. It's hard to believe that this mechanism was invented in the first century BC. In the late 1990s, residents of the small town of Taos in New Mexico began to regularly hear a strange, low-frequency sound. Some described it as a muted hum of several diesel engines, while others compared it to the noise from a high-flying airplane. People were concerned about the phenomenon and turned to authorities to find out what it was. The U.S. Congress assembled a group of scientists to investigate the area, but they were unable to determine the cause of the strange sound. Currently, scientists have several theoretical versions explaining this anomaly. According to the most popular one, the hum occurs due to the movement of lithospheric plates deep underground. It is believed that such noise is a precursor to earthquakes. However, this phenomenon has been ongoing for the second decade, and there have been no earthquakes near Taos during this time. Moreover, only the town's residents regularly hear the hum. Visitors rarely catch it. Perhaps the Taos residents have become accustomed to this noise, and their ears are literally tuned to hear it. But this also sounds very strange. On November 24, 1971, an unknown middle-aged man bought a ticket for a flight from Portland to Seattle. At the registration desk, he introduced himself as Dan Cooper. Eight minutes after takeoff, Cooper handed a note to a flight attendant, stating that he had a bomb in his suitcase and the plane was hijacked. To avoid any harm, he demanded $200,000 in small bills and four parachutes. When the plane landed in Seattle, the hijacker's demands were met. He exchanged 36 passengers and two flight attendants for the ransom and then demanded the aircraft be refueled and set on a southeast course toward Mexico. 20 minutes after taking off again, Cooper jumped from the plane and has never been seen since. For over 50 years, police have tried to find the criminal but have been unsuccessful. It is also unknown whether the mysterious man survived the parachute jump or perished. The only lead in this case came from an eight-year-old boy who found three packets of money on the Tina Bar Beach along the Columbia River. The police confirmed that these were the exact banknotes Cooper received as ransom. But even this discovery clarified nothing. Perhaps the money simply fell out when the hijacker made his jump. Debates about whether Atlantis ever truly existed continue to this day. 
This island was first mentioned in the dialogues of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. In his writings, he spoke of Atlantis being located in the Atlantic Ocean, specifically west of the Pillars of Hercules, opposite the Atlas Mountains. To be clearer, the island would have been situated in the territory of modern Africa, in the northwestern part of the continent, near the Strait of Gibraltar. According to legend, a terrible earthquake occurred in this place in 9500 BC, which submerged Atlantis into the ocean floor overnight. It's worth noting that even though this happened at a time when people on our planet only possessed primitive tools, the inhabitants of Atlantis were highly advanced. They built temples, bridges, and even ships. It sounds fantastic. I think even Plato was amazed by this civilization, so to prove that it was not his invention, he referred to the handwritten records of the wise man Solon, who spoke about Atlantis. Of course, archaeologists have been trying to find traces of the sunken mythical island for many years, but none of the attempts has been successful. Researchers sometimes find unknown submerged ruins in entirely different corners of our planet. But of course, there is no proof that they belong to Atlantis. Some experts believe it's impossible to find traces of this island's existence because it was actually located in the territory of modern Antarctica. Either way, Atlantis continues to remain one of the most mysterious places on Earth. On the night of February 2, 1959, in the Sverdlovsk region, near Mount Kolat Siakl, a terrible tragedy occurred. A group of experienced hikers led by 23-year-old student Igor Dyatlov embarked on a ski trip. They were to ascend the peaks of Oika Chakur and Otorten and then descend back to the settlement of Vijay by February 12th. When the group did not return on the appointed day, a search and rescue operation was organized. On February 26th, a cut-open tent was discovered. Nearby, tracks leading towards the forest were visible. Further search efforts found the bodies of all group members within a 1.5 kilometers radius of the tent. Some had died from hypothermia, while others had severe physical injuries. Of course, all this seemed very strange. Why did the young people hastily leave their camp and run away practically without clothing? Why did some of them have injuries, while others simply died from the cold? There were many questions, but no answers were found. Among the theories for the Dyatlov group's demise were an avalanche, an attack on the camp by wild animals, and even military tests. Unfortunately, what happened that night remains unclear to this day. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.